Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. If you're not too careful, you just might learn something. I've got the, all the pistons out, I've got the crank out, got the cam out. Um, before I flip this over or go any further, I want to get the cam followers, or you may know them as lifters, out. Being an old diesel, this thing has uh, got uh, solid lifters in it, so that's why they just call them cam followers. But it's important if you're going to reuse the camshaft that you take those out and put, return them in the exact order so that that same lifter or follower is running on that same lobe because they kind of bed in you know it's kind of like when you put your new hot camshaft in your small block or your LS and fire it up and you have to break in the cam and all that well it's the same thing here so now what I do because uh, I don't remember very well and I don't trust writing on anything with a sharpie uh, that has oil on it I just make a simple little thing out of a board here and I just drill holes in it that the lifters will, or followers will stand in and then indicate you know where the front of the engine is and the cylinder number and so forth that makes it nice and easy and you just, you know, lay your thing on here with your, uh, um, you know, arrow pointing to the front of the motor. And I'm going to get me a rag here. And if you recall, I said I turned this thing upside down so that I could get the cam out. And that's because all the followers will just fall down out of the way of the camshaft. And then we just reach in there and pop them all out. And I just give them a good wipe down. But not too much. You don't want to take all the oil off them because you don't want them to rust depending on how long you're blocking it's going to be at the machine shop and so forth and so on. So being able to uh, build this workshop was a real blessing. And I, I get comments from viewers and subscribers all the time that they'll say, you know, that they live vicariously through this shop. <laughs> and I, I totally get it because, uh, you know, before I was able to have my own workshop here, I would watch, you know, YouTube channels of folks that, you know, had their own nice, cool workshop. And I would sit there and learn from them and get ideas from how their workshop's set up, how the tools, you know, are. And that's why you notice that, uh, you know, I've got this cool Gee Whiz workshop and, you know, and all these cool tools and everything. But yet I got this crappy old ancient craftsman box sitting over here. And, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just not one of those guys that, that uh, wants a big, giant, shiny toolbox. Especially as expensive as they are, man, they're ridiculous. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the ones you get at Lowe's and Home Depot. I'm talking about like your big snap-on boxes. And uh, you know, it's easy to drop 20 grand in just your toolbox. And I remember back in the day when I worked as a mechanic, these guys that were up to their eyeballs in debt to the tool truck, you know justifiably so I mean every spare minute they had they were polishing that toolbox and cleaning it and all that but that's just not my style alright so I got all my lifters here and 
you know, you want to set these somewhere, you know, where they won't get disturbed and knocked over. But, uh, you know, if you have to, take another piece of wood, put over top and, you know, wrap some tape or a bungee around it or whatever if you're worried about them getting disturbed. So, I'll put these over here. All right, so now I gotta work on, I gotta get this front timing plate off of here. It's a big giant metal plate that bolts onto the front of the motor. And, uh, you know, that's where you like your injector pump and, you know, and all this other stuff goes and mounts to. More often than not, this front plate here will be stuck on there pretty good. But you want to be careful. You don't want to go yakking on it with a pry bar or a chisel or anything like that uh, without exercising some care because, you know, if you deform the plate too bad, then you may have uh, oil leaks or coolant leaks later on when you go to put your motor back together. I'm going to spin this around so you can get a better look at what I'm working on here. All right. And now while yes, I am using a chisel and a hammer, um, what you want to do, I've already tapped behind here and loosened these down here at the bottom. There's some locating dowels here, here, and invariably your broken water pump bolt. Uh, that's holding it in for sure. And then you've got a stud that goes all the way through into the block here that's invariably holding this plate on. But the trick is, is to go behind the plate here on the back side of the block and just gently tap. And you'll know when you break, break it loose because you'll see it flexing as you tap on it. And just take your time, be patient. And if you do have to put any force behind it, you just want to be real careful not to deform that plate. I mean, the plate's pretty thick, but still, you still want to exercise some caution. You see, right now, this, uh, this bolt that broke off here is kind of frozen in there, and it's definitely holding that, definitely holding that plate in. So we're going we're gonna to just real carefully work on this. hear the pitch changing? That's the impending sound of success. Now we switch over to the other side. Let's see, we've got this last little dowel pin here that's holding us up. And we can't get anywhere behind it. So we'll have to, uh, we might have to finagle with that just a wee bit. And of course, you know, you can always clean around it and, and uh, all that, maybe even put some penetrating oil on it. But we're just gonna have to be uh, careful with this and, and keep working on it from side to side. And there we go. She is off of there. But see, you want to get all this stuff off of the motor and get as much, you know, undone as possible before you take it to the machine shop because, you know, anything that machine shop does, you're going to have to pay them for, obviously. So the more menial stuff that you can do ahead of time, you'll save yourself some money. So now our trick here is going to be extracting this stud and this broken bolt. Um, frankly, I'm surprised we didn't have any more than, than what we did, but uh, I'm not going to complain, that's for sure.
We're going to have to, have, when we take this block to the machine shop, of course I'm going to have them do the usual stuff, check for cracks and such, but uh, the big thing I'm going to have to have them do is, is uh, cleaning because someone had uh, apparently run water uh, for the coolant and there's a lot of rust and scale and, and crap in all the water jackets. I mean, the water pump was literally locked up with cake of rust and corrosion and such. So, um, and unfortunately now with your uh, EPA uh, regulations, you know, uh, used to be a process that we used to call hot tanking. And it used like probably every noxious chemical known to man. And, you know, they heated it up to some ungodly temperature and they would dip your block in there and soak it and it'd come out, it would look brand spanking new. I mean, there would be nothing on there. But now they use the equivalent of dishwashing detergent and pressure, you know, to, uh, to clean these blocks out. And it's just, it's just no, not as good. So I'll kind of go over this with a wire wheel first. Just to kind of get what I can off of here. And then I'll go over it with a cookie. It's basically a Scotch Brite or Rolock or whatever your favorite brand is. But invariably, we're going to have to put some heat to this. And we don't want any kind of noxious fumes from our uh, uh, you know, gaskets burning up and stuff like that. I mean, you're going to have to clean this all anyway, but... Hey, you always have a couple of options here. Um, we're fortunate in that we've got, you know, a nice little nub sticking out here. You know, the first instinct is, is to weld the nut on it. But actually, first, we want to try and get some heat in it because uh, around it, is if you put a nut on there, then you're not going to be able to get as close with your heat. And, you know, we're kind of lucky here, too, because we can go back in here and put heat on the, uh, uh, behind this just a little bit and in through here. And uh, we should be able to get this out with a torch and a pair of ice grips. Okay, so I'm going to use some pinpoint heat. So I'll use a, a large welding tip instead of, say, like a big giant rosebud that just throws a bunch of fire at everything all at once. And uh, because I want to be able to really, really have uh, good control over what heat I'm putting here. Kind of pre-size our, kind of pre-size our uh, rice grips here. Make sure I got them right. Okay, which I do. We're gonna go in here and warm this up. Come around here and throw some heat here. Whoops. <laughs> Hate it when that happens.
This is a blind hole back here. So there's a big chunk of casting that they drilled into and tapped the threads. So, usually penetrating oil and stuff like that doesn't do any good once these things get frozen in there. You don't necessarily need to get everything bright cherry red. Get you a little heat there. And just work it back and forth. Break it loose. There you go. That would probably cost you anywhere near maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks at the machine shop. So, yeah. Anywhere you can save yourself a little bit of money, you're good off. So, now I'm going to set this somewhere over here where I don't have to worry about it catching anything or on fire or melting anything. And then we'll go after this stud right here. Because that's going to need to come out. That's just asking for trouble. You send it to the machine shop with that stud in there. It's still real stiff coming out. Don't be afraid to throw a little more heat at it. As you'll notice, when you do, it starts coming out nice and easy. And then as it cools off, it'll start getting stiff again. All right, there we go. Now what we'll do when we get this block back from the machine shop before we ever stick one bolt to it, we're going to go through and chase all these threads with a tap and make sure everything's good and copacetic. And uh, plus, you know, we don't want, uh, if you've got a boogered hole, it's going to throw your torque off, your torque spec when you're tightening them. So, uh, especially like head bolts and manifold bolts, they have to be tightened to a specific torque. Yeah, you want to be careful about all that. All right, you know, it's, uh, that's usually, it scares the heck out of anybody, you know, when they break a bolt or something like that. But, uh, you know, us Yankees, you know, we come from the Rust Belt. We invented this shit. <laughs> So now we're going to work on getting our uh, oil galley plugs out of here because in order for the machine shop to really assure you that they're going to be able to, you know, wash this block out and get it good and clean is they're going to need all these plugs out and um, now uh, 
Most of the time, they're going to fight you, and they're going to give you a hard time. So, but you treat them no differently than you would, say, a broken bolt or a stud. Um, you know, the same, same rules apply. Uh, sometimes you get lucky, and these little plugs will come out. Uh, they're just threaded in plugs. They usually have like a Allen head uh, type of deal on there. But uh, and we'll just take and we'll make sure you get all the schmutz out of the, the hole so that your, your bit fits in there real good. Like this one's all full of you know, dirt dauber stuff. God, I hate those things. They're just nasty. I swear, you probably heard me say this before in other videos, but I swear they'd, they'd uh, <clears throat> do a nest in a crack of a gnat's ass, given the opportunity. So, uh, I've come in sometimes and found they've built a nest in the bottom of the nipple of my air tool not thinking I won't look and hook my air up and like, what's wrong with this tool? The damn dirt dauber done built a nest in the end of it. So, but that was before, thankfully before I had the enclosed shop. But, uh, now these aren't plugs, it's just a threaded hole, but since I'm cleaning. I'll go ahead and dig that mess out of there. And then we've also got a couple of uh, uh, pressing plugs on each end. This is actually an oil galley. Um, we definitely want to clean that. Um, and then there's a cut plug in the back here where the camshaft goes. Now one thing you may have noticed is that uh, you know this engine block has no freeze plugs, and it's just beyond me that someone would just run plain water in one of these things, because uh, you know they could freeze up and you know you bust a block wide open, and uh, it's uh, you know I mean this is a this is a hundred thousand dollar tractor you know that new, I mean of course I got it for next to nothing because it was clapped out because somebody didn't take care of it but uh, you know it's it's just beyond me how uh, how anybody can can do that but it is what it is I guess so all right so like I said you know you can pray and hope you get lucky because I'll always try them first before I you know before I throw the torch to them but more often than not, they're not going to cooperate. So, and you want to be careful with these Allen heads because, you know, I mean, you can round them out if you're not careful. So, and you want to make sure that you've got the bit completely seated. That's why it's important to. Uh, important to clean the holes out. <clears throat> yeah, that one ain't cooperating. And sometimes, you know, if they got a lot of paint in them or something, and you can't get them in there, you just give them a tap. Light tap with your hammer, seat them in there real good. Nope. Yeah, you can always hope, right? All right, so we got our bit in there. We'll start on this one.
Look at that. And just like a hot pan in the kitchen, <laughs> make sure you remember all this stuff's hot. Don't oh, burn in yourself. All right, so we got all our little uh, screw in plugs out of there. And interesting thing is, is that these plugs are strategically positioned at each oil galley or passage so that you can literally clean every single oil passage in this engine block. Um, <laughs> which is probably more than I can say for most of your modern uh, automobiles now. But uh, let, me, let me show you something. Okay, I'm gonna show you something here. I'm gonna use my little handy cam and flashlight. Sorry for the little handy cam being all shaky here, but we're going to look down this hole and I'm going to shine my light down in there through the uh, number one main bearing lube hole right there. And you can see, you know, where you see the light down in there. So with that, basically, we can, you know, run a wire brush and clean every single one of these oil passages in, in here. Um, the same goes through, same goes for the passage that goes up to the head to lubricate the valve train. So, um, you know, it's just, they, they just built these, you know, with an eye toward serviceability, again, which is not always applicable to your modern day vehicles but um, yeah so you know, we can make sure 110 percent that you know we've got this thing right when we put it back together so this first cylinder or uh, fourth actually cylinder sleeve the one that was uh, damaged um, we weren't going to be able to get that out using traditional means, so we had to kind of get creative and use my uh, slide hammer with a three-jaw expanding puller and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it wasn't very pretty, but um, I did need to get it out so I could get some measurements to make a tool to do the other three because um, the uh, the tool the sleeve puller is like ridiculously expensive I mean they're hundreds of dollars and I don't work on stuff like this enough to warrant spending that kind of money on that tool so you know I happen to be named MacGyver so uh, it's just a moral imperative that I make a tool to do the job so um, I'm going to uh, take the little camera over here and show you just what a mess it is inside this block in the water jackets and uh, you know what happens and what builds up when you don't take care of your uh, coolant so let's uh, let's get the camera over here and let's see what we got <laughs> now you can see down in there all that all that rust and scale and let me get my light and get there's some light down there and towards the bottom of the block where we can see a little better and I mean that's just terrible all that stuff's just all flaked and uh, breaking loose and traveling through the cooling system and clogging the radiator up and all that it's just awful so and here is our well, what's left of our sleeve and uh, that was uh, that was in that was in pretty bad shape 
it was broken and cracked in a whole bunch of places and then of course as soon as you put any force to it to pull it out it just fell apart so we ended up having to gingerly tap it out the rest of the way so but now we're going to make ourselves a tool that will uh, fit down in now we're doing this in the top but it'll be actually in the bottom okay and we'll have a long bolt that'll come up through here and then we'll have a stand where uh, you know we'll tighten that nut down and it'll just literally pull that sleeve right up out of the block so yeah now let me get cracking and get this tool finished so you can see what we're going to do here and see it in action now have my tool all set up here and I've gone ahead and kind of lubed this up with some WD-40 right up here at the top that's where the that's where the nuts going to be bearing down on everything and we will start applying some force here and we'll see how we do hopefully we won't break anything <laughs> Look at that. It's coming right on up out of there. Ain't that nice? Ain't physics great? Okie dokie. We're good here. Ta da! How about that, sports fans? We be ramming and jamming. Well, we are on our way to uh, Nashville. We're going down to uh, uh, Shacklets machine shop uh, I don't know if you guys know them they're the ones that uh, have done a lot of work for the power nation uh, and uh, so uh, I need a quick turnaround on this and this is pretty much just boilerplate you know machine shop work so uh, my guy up in uh, my little <laughs> my Yoda up in Franklin he's tied up and uh, busy so we're gonna go down and visit those guys and hopefully maybe they'll let me film a little bit while I'm in there and uh, got everything back there kind of set nice and tidy I'm gonna uh, take it real nice and easy going down there everybody <laughs> it's funny you know Nashville's music city and all that kind of stuff and you know all it is now is millennial hipster city and, and uh, about the only thing left is uh, uh, Broadway and uh, you know, everything else is you know, it's hipster high-rises and stuff and, and it's like none of the locals around here want to go to Nashville <laughs> unless they absolutely have to but anyway let's get rolling all right here we are like right in the thick of downtown They are. Hmm. The world famous Shacklet Auto Machine Shop. Alright. We are here. All right, so I just got done dropping everything off at the shop. You can see, 
that's where uh, that's where it is. And when you look at it on uh, when you see it on YouTube, if you've watched like Power Nation, uh, it's really kind of interesting because you know on uh, on TV uh, the shop looks a whole lot bigger than it really is, and this shop is like. You know it's like in a neighborhood there's like houses right across the street from me and uh, you know it's in really tucked in tight on a back street in, in uh, downtown Nashville it's just, it's honestly it's, I've, I've known of them forever and uh, but this is the first time I've actually you know physically come to the shop I mean I've talked to them and and sent some business their way and all this that and the other but uh, this is the first time I've actually ever been to their shop and it's really amazing it's a lot smaller than it looks on TV but uh, but they're busy Woo. thanks for watching and uh, you know don't take any wooden nickels feel free to comment and uh, please subscribe click the bell icon there to be notified when uh, I post some new videos and uh, we'll talk at you later